Hey you guys, this is Tom from Tom's Interesting Talk and today we're adding some brand new fish to the 105, 155 gallon fish tank today. If you look real close at the top of the fish tank you can see bags of fish. I have four of them. So I went to the pet store today um, a place called the Pet Shop here in Mesa. Um, it's a really nice pet shop. They do a really good um, job. All their fish tanks are ran with sponge filters um, and are a pretty natural environment and I like going to them because they have water very similar to my own water. Um, so it's a really easy transition for fish from that fish store in particular the pet shop in Mesa off of Power Road um, for them to acclimate to my tank really really well so I like to use them. They are a little more expensive but they're a small um, pet store um, that I like to support because without some of these small pet stores that do it the right way all we'd have is the big box stores like the Pet Smarts and the things things like that and uh, we need our our little fish fisheries so to speak our little places that we can get our neat exotic fish from so what I'm going to be adding to the tank today and what I've talked to in my last video or talked about in my last video was breeding cardinal tetras. So today I went and bought 15 cardinal tetras and I already had you know a few different cardinal tetras in my tank already but I want to get these guys at a young age and then we'll let them mature in this tank and then when they get to a proper matured age so that they can breed and you're seeing signs of them like the females will get bigger, the males will just stay nice and sleek. That's how you tell the females from the males. Once we start seeing um, that real differentiation between the two, male and female, you know it's just about time um, to try to breed them. Um, and then we're going to create the right environments and we're going to breed cardinal tetras because I would love in this tank to have 50 or 60 cardinal tetras in here and have just a big shul and beautiful um, cardinal tetra red and blue shul just swimming around in here because they're really neat and the fact that they really stay together and swim together um, in these big neat coordinated swimming patterns it's really cool to see and I'm excited to try to create that in my tank here. We also got a few more Julii catfish um, my small five gallon tank, which is the guppy breeding tank, needed a couple small catfish. And Julii catfish get about two and a half inches big at best. Um, they are a social fish and you they would rather be in a little bigger group, but I put two of them in my little five gallon tank. Um, and I'm hoping that they'll help that biological system um, maintain. So we're, I bought four Julii catfish two for the small tank and then two to add to the big tank here because there's already four or five of them in the big tank and you know more the merrier when it comes to bottom feeders and I tell you the Julii catfish um, out of all these guys that I've had I mean I've had spotted Corydoras and albino Corydoras and just regular Corydoras I've had a ton of different kinds of catfish and I, these Julii are the funnest to watch in my opinion um, they have some really neat coordinated dances and I've talked about their mating patterns and things like that in the past Julii catfish are just neat fish in general. They are so fun to watch. They have these just amazing dances that they do um, when they mate and they're being social together. Um, they're just great to watch and I always enjoy having them in my tank so far. Um, I've had them in two different tanks now um, and they're a pleasure to watch. And like I said, I'm putting two in the small five gallon tank. So they're not going to be too big. They're not going to get too large for that for that small tank. And there'll be two of them in there. And they'll still be able to feel social because they'll at least be able to get to hang out with each other. Now let's hope. Let's hope. And we can kind of cross our fingers and hope that maybe by some chance I put a male and female in that small breeding tank. Um, and we'll get lucky. Um, and by some crazy chance maybe... <laughs> Maybe we'll breed Corydora, Julii catfish Corydora. It's very possible. We'll see. We'll see. But um, needless to say, the small five-gallon tank needed um, a small bottom feeder, some small bottom feeders. 
um, to help keep the tank a little cleaner so that we can go a little more time without having to, you know, do the vacuums and doing the water changes and doing those things. You know, I like to create these natural biological systems where the fish kind of take care of the environment, um, being them eating, pooping and peeing, or catfish is cleaning up um, the excess food and the excess ammonia and waste um, that can be produced in there. Um, we'd rather it be natural, biological, from the fish as much as possible, rather than there being just nasty food in there, um, um, breaking down and causing excess ammonia. And then, so about two months ago, maybe three months ago now, um, at the pet shop, they have these tanks that are in the pet shop, you know, there's four or five of them and, you know, they basically take strays from people that are moving, you know, maybe if somebody's died and they had, you know, and they left their fish tank, you know, they take in strays all the time. Um, it's basically a $2.99, you know, they'll kind of scoop up what's in there for you, two ninety nine a fish. And I was lucky enough, in my opinion anyway, to find a whole little shul of black and blue um, platies and I know there's a, a specific name for them but you guys I'm just not the best with all that so um, they're black and blue platies in my opinion and when I went to the store the other day I found one little guy that was a black and blue, blue platy in those tanks and luckily enough the, the guy was would, gave me that one little black and blue platy so we're adding one more of those platies to the big tank um, and then also in those tanks they had four adult cardinal tetras so I went ahead and bought those cardinal tetras as well um, and saved a little bit of money you know the cardinal tetras the small ones that they breed they're $5.99 a piece um, and in those pick tanks um, they're $2.99 a piece so I saved a little bit of money plus I have some older mature cardinal tetras um, hell that I might be able to use them for my breeding project and we can get that off the ground even a little bit faster uh, than expected so we'll keep an eye on the Cardinal Tetras. Hopefully they all hold up. Um, they all make it. And hopefully my dino, uh, my giant dinos don't drive them crazy. The giant dinos in there, the silverish tan fish that really have a lot of movement, you'll see them going back and forth, back and forth all day long. Um, they're kind of the heartbeat of the tank, so to speak, as far as with movement. And, you know, the Cardinal Tetras are kind of small fish. And if they can, if the fish world's doggy doggy, guys. Um, if that fish will fit in that other fish's mouth, they're going to eat it. So um, hopefully my little cardinal tetras um, get fast and quick and learn that those guys are up to no good and learn to avoid them. And that's kind of the, the nature of the beast. Uh, survival of the fittest, so to speak, you know? Um, so that's so that's what we got. We got 15 cardinal tetras, and then we've got four Julii catfish that we added to this tank, and then we also got that blue and black platy to add to my shul of them that I have in here. I think I have seven or eight of them in here, so that'll I think it add. That's either going to add the seventh or the eighth one, and. Also, my four adult cardinal tetras, um, which is pretty cool. I think that's a nice haul, and I think it's going to add some really nice color to this tank. And I think it's going to make feeding time and some of my live feeding times coming up because I'm working on being able to go live on YouTube and looking forward to doing some live feedings. Um, and I'm probably going to start growing brine shrimp um, for my guppy breeding tank and then maybe we'll do feeding shuls of brine shrimp in here, live brine shrimp, and we'll do that live. So that's some things to look forward to coming up. Uh, don't forget to check out my tank series, my, my five gallon guppy breeding tank series made from or inspired by Father Fish. It's a soil and sand, small breeding tank that I'm growing live grass in, and we're also breeding very beautiful guppies in that small tank. So be, out, be on the lookout for my next video 
coming up on that series as well. And then now we're going to start doing feeding feeding videos on the 155 gallon tank and then I think we'll do some feeding videos also on the 5 gallon breeding tank. And um, you can watch the changes um, as that tank uh, matures. Because remember at this point it's only about 5 months old and, and it's just now starting to establish itself. Some of the plants and the things in there are growing are just barely in their infancy. So we're going to add maybe another plant or two to that little five gallon tank and add some other small things to it. Um, and then watch, of course, all of our small little guppies grow up and become big guppies. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. If you like what we're doing, if you like what we're talking about um, and like looking at this tank of ours, please like and subscribe. It doesn't cost anything to like and you know that makes it all go around you guys. Thanks again. I do appreciate you spending some time with me and watching us and watching this fish mature and grow and these environments mature and grow. As the plants grow, the fish get bigger and of course, I get older. Anyway, thank you guys. Bye now.